Hello everybody. We are today uh, here to talk about uh, aircraft uh, for the during the Ukrainian wars, and especially uh, since uh, we have uh, actually on Mr. Lamborghini about uh, first uh, the new F-16 for Ukraine, and especially since the uh, Atreyo has uh, worked in the past uh, as part of a uh, wound proof for the F-16, and uh, we are going to ask him a lot of things about uh, how to to have an airbase in Ukraine for F-16. We are going to try to not consider the Russian activity for this airbase. So we are not going to speak about uh, air defense or things like that, okay? Just what you need to make sure the F-16 could do combat mission by themselves, okay? And in the second time, uh, Mr. Lambo is going to speak to us about a few aircraft. He has, I think, already uh, seen himself, or at least uh, understand very well, because Mr. Lambo, we are lucky about that, know a lot about uh, every aircraft uh, in the area. So yes. first, I'm going to let... Uh, at where you speak. Yes. So first, um, a little bit of a background check. So currently, uh, I'm an engineer, uh, specifically a technical support engineer in the semiconductor industry. But I started as a, a aircraft maintenance as I went to college for uh, specifically aircraft maintenance on fixed wings. And I had the opportunity to work on F-16s as a, as a project on um, the military base, which was... Uh, part of the, the school program. As to where I was also approached um, to join the, the Royal Dutch Air Force to uh, perform maintenance on, on the F-16s. I ended up declining because I wanted to switch to, to helicopters instead of fixed wings. And then also uh, I had a desire to return to my country of origin, which is Suriname, as to where I had more opportunity there. So I have worked on F-16s, and it is one of the the, the aircraft that I, I adore a lot. So my input is based on my experience worth working on an F-16s, the difficulties coming from it, and then also with an aircraft maintenance background. So the first question being, what do you need for 30 or uh, 30 F-16s? I would try to simplify it first um, because the, the answer to this question, it, it will go in two directions. Uh, one is what do you need in order to facilitate uh, 30 F-16s? And then the other, what is already uh, available and with that more realistic. So to start, let's focus on one F-16 first. If you want to build the, the facilities in order to house and maintain an Air F-16, um, what do you need? A proper uh, runway. So landing and takeoff, because F-16s are actually uh, quite sensitive. So the, the power of the, the internet is going to introduce uh, rubble and rock. So it cannot just land and, and uh, take off on regular runways simply because of the, 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 the inlet. Uh, if you can show a picture. So if you look at the, the, uh, this front view, uh, what you see below is, is the, the inlet. So the, what the engine does is it sucks in a lot of air. And then in, in the engine, the air gets compressed in stages. But the, the, the inlet, while it sucks, it, it is extremely powerful. Uh, it is, in fact, so powerful, uh, it can suck in a human being fairly easy. The person, uh, if, uh, if unlucky, would die and, and gets compressed in the process. But there is actually a, a center beam which prevents uh, per people from, from getting sucked into the actual engine. So it is an extremely powerful engine that uh, would need a very clean runway uh, for takeoff. So this is something that is prone for the F-16 and it is necessary for, uh, in order to have a clean and proper takeoff, but it also comes to landings. So... The first thing you would need to do, 
uh, is, an ha is a hanger. Because if you don't have the, the, the ability to house an F-60, then it shouldn't be there to begin with. Because the materials, they are light materials and um, it is easy, uh, it's prone to rust. And also um, the, the general environment needs to be conditioned. So you need a hanger. Then you need a, 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 proper, um, a proper runway for takeoff and landing. Uh, the runway needs to be uh, maintained regularly because uh, so it, in different parts of the world, they use different material. So uh, asphalt is, is very common, but also concrete. But then concrete gets layered. So what, what you get is, is that you have a, a floor of concrete um, that is connected uh, together. So, and then there is another layer on top of it. The, the reason why you need uh, a proper runway is because of uh, the, 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 the takeoff lane needs to be extremely clean. It's because uh, the air, the, the inlet, uh, sucks in such an amount of uh, volume of air for for the engine to 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 compress and then uh, drives into to the uh, or which would lead into the push is is going to be uh, important because uh, how do you say that sand and and uh, small rubbles can actually damage uh, either the the turbine and or the rotor blades. The, um, within the engine. So this is something that you want to pre uh, prevent at all times. Even though uh, there is always um, maintenance performed before and after, so, so pre and post, uh, post flights, it's really hard to detect um, scratches and or damages on rotor blades. And then if you look at the engine itself, it is, um, divided into two forms. So you have the, the, the static the static blades or the stator blades, and then you have the actual rotor blades. So basically um, what that means is, is that if somewhere uh, a blade gets some form of damage within the, the whole stage of the rotor or, or static rotor, what you get is, is that um, because of the, 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 the temperatures and the speed at, at which these rotors uh, uh, rotate, uh, you get resonance. And then the, the, the resonance or acoustic resonance can cause um, cracks within the blades that uh, would result in, in a malfunction or could result in a malfunction. So uh, the picture that you show, so where the, the air enters, that's um, at the, the, the first stage. So you have the, the turbines. The turbines, they, they suck in gross air and then they get compressed uh, um, in the stages they go into. So the F-16 uh, doesn't have many stages. Uh, I think it, it is 10 stage, but I would have to double check. So basically the, the air gets sucked in first and then gets compressed. And, ba and uh, what's a compression? So the, um, the the rotor blade after the turbine, it it slams air into a, a, a into a a, um, a a smaller form. So that that's the compression. So it, it takes in the air and it compresses it into a um, into a, a cubic meter or cubic centimeter, and then it gets thrown into the next static and then the next rotor blade. So that's called a stage. So every time this happens, the air gets compressed more and more and more. This, this is responsible or this will end up uh, translating into a thrust power. So you get a significant push. And then you have um, the, the additional, the, the, the fuel that gets added. So there is actually uh, air going to the fuel chambers and then uh, fuel gets added. So where the, the fuel gets combusted, they do that with spray because spray fuel gets uh, combust much easier. Uh, 
my apologies for for the the vague translation because I actually don't know the the the, the name of how the spray fuel is called in English, but. Uh, Basically, what happens is, so if you have a lot of uh, very, uh, very fine fuel droplets, it is much easier to combust. So it's sprayed in air presses, and then there is an, ele uh, an um, uh, electric rod that, shoo that, that uh, ignites the fuel. So they use electricity to ignite it. And then that with compressed air uh, in one hand, which will meet uh, in the the final chambers to um, to to produce the truss. So basically, if in this process one of these blades in the 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 stages of of uh, compression gets damaged or damaged enough, you can uh, create acoustic um, uh, acoustic resonance, and then as this builds up you can pretty much damage the, the rotary blade so much that it can simply rip. So you would have a, a potential engine failure and or you simply lose the blade completely, which would have significant impact as to where you, no, you are no longer able to properly use the engine um, efficiently. So, and then further damage could, uh, could, could, could exist. So you need a clean runway. So the smaller the particles, the less significant the, uh, the damage could be, but damage is imminent as uh, runways are never completely dust free. And then the sensitivity is uh, debatable. Some would say some uh, sand particles are acceptable and or um, small rocks, but we have never seen it in significant action um, unfortunately, uh, actually rather fortunately, because it is a war machine, but you need a team to keep the runways clean on a regular basis because weather conditions have an influence. Um, also can, uh, within the weather conditions consider is that wind moves dust from other areas, but also particles that are uh, big enough, such as small rocks and such but also sand debris or like, um, uh, how do you say, clay-like phenomenon. So if you have grass fields, what you tend to see is, is that uh, uh, clay or, or, or earth clumps together and gets on the runway. Those need to all be clean it's because the, the, the inlet power slams these particles uh, or slams these debris onto the fans and into the rotary. Uh, which you would want to prevent. So you need a proper team to keep the runways clean. Then you would need to have uh, aircraft maintenance, which is also usually a team of two or three people uh, in order to uh, provide airworthiness, which needs significant training. So you, have, you would have a senior engineer or a technical lead, and then the, the, the performance engineers, which are the the technicians who work hands-on in order to uh, keep the, the, the aircraft airworthy. And an airworthiness means is that the, um, the technical lead uh, agrees that the system has been prepared and maintained in proper conditions according uh, to the maintenance manual. And then the maintenance manual is considered uh, the, the holy grail or the holy bible when it comes to aircraft maintenance. So it's like a, a gold list. Everything needs to be within a particular spec in order for the aircraft to perform optimal. So this needs to be done by a team. And then there is a separate avionics team. So avionics is basically uh, all of the electronics that happens in the cockpit and everything related to that. So the basic T, which is the, 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 the analog gauges, but also the, the, the displays and everything else uh, like circuit breakers and such. Um, besides that, since we are talking about a, a, a war machine, weaponry is also a, a different team. 
So people who are specialized in handling particular types of bombs or rockets, but also the maintenance of the, the rail guns uh, or the Gatling guns and such. So you have different teams that need, that need to come together and all start working on these. And usually um, there is no cross competence. So you only have expertise based on uh, what you are working on on the aircraft. And in the F-16s case, you do that in phases or in terms. So you would look at the body. Uh, so all of the mechanical actions, both interior and exterior, that comes first. Avionics sometimes can be done in parallel, but if it's a more complex uh, um, routine or if there is a situation that needs attention, we, we would take turns and or plan it in between. Weapons gets done at, uh, uh, on the final, in the, I'd say it. It's the final part of the sequence of, of preparing the aircraft for airworthiness. And then also um, weapons need extra care. So I never worked on, on the, the, the weaponry system because I, don't ha I never had the licensing for it. And then because I never joined the, the military, uh, I was never going to get it. So I focused mainly on the, um, the mechanical aspect. So the body and uh, the interiors. This basically means is, is that you would need a hangar, a team, equipment, tools, uh, parts, and then parts come in two ways. We have consumable so, materials. I'm going to cut you here. Uh, ah. For such EF-16, how many guys on the ground are crew? <laughs> This is why I want to simplify it. So for 30, uh, so basically you need to look, look uh, on workload. Workload is very important. So how... Uh, uh, How many F-16s or how many aircraft could one team success, uh, successfully uh, get ready for flight? So prepare airworthiness get, and get it approved for flight. This um, you would look at uh, probably a team from somewhere ranging between 10 people. So that's uh, avionics, uh, mechanics. So avionics is called B2. Um, mechanics is called B1. So these two is already you're looking at uh, five people approximately. And then that's including the, the lead engineer. And then you need a team for weaponry. So weaponry, this is also usually around five people. But then it depends on the, the dynamics of, uh, of, the, of the hangar, to be honest. So it could vary. So I would say you need at least 10 people for uh, five aircraft. But so if you need to prepare 10 aircraft per day, you need 100 people. Yes, you you are going to look into this direction. So in okay. so wow. my my problem in this case is is that all of my actions on the F16s were in peacetime and in very controlled <laughs> environment. So there was never a high dynamic nor was there ever um, so, 200. pressure. This, this is going to vary. And it also depends on the experience of the team. So it's um, very difficult to, to say. So that leads to the so. second part of the question as to where building a facility to house 30 aircraft in Ukraine is extremely unrealistic. Um, yes, I know. So, so basically, basically... Ukraine doesn't have enough people for that. No, no, no. Of course not. no they need to train. They need to so, train them all. This is also this is one of the um, uh, a very important uh, side note. An F-16 is an American aircraft. Americans are extremely strict on how to maintain and how to handle the F-16 or, or American aircraft in general. So Ukraine doesn't have the ability to properly maintain, but also prepare the aircraft in any form or way. So the, the um, F-16s would probably not be handled in Ukraine to begin with. 
it wouldn't be needed to be done in a NATO country that actually already holds F-16. That's a whole another talk uh, for another day, where the okay. airbase would be. Yes. So the so... question is what you need to build the airbase, because, okay, you need, I'm going to, to summarize, I, I know it's not the rule, I know it's an approximation, but everything, ah. but you need 200 really well-trained guy for you, 13... Uh, 30 uh, aircraft, okay. If they uh, are in what action, do you need that fuel? Uh, for fuel? Um, yes. Fuel is a little bit complex because so, <laughs> so kerosene is a diesel type. So um, this is going to depend on the capacity that, uh, that, that the airbase would be carrying and then also uh, what Ukraine can, can supply. Normally, the fuel tanks where the kerosene gets stored is on the airbase and would get refueled, uh, resupplied either by pipelines and or by fuel trucks. Usually, it depends on where the airbase is located. So, but my, my question is very there. simple. For mm -hmm. such aircraft, do you need uh, fuel trucks or fuel train? I'm sorry, it's really hard to answer because... You don't know, okay. Yeah, this is all. We are talking about war conditions. So yes. my, uh, uh, I'm expecting this these aircraft to be flying most of the time, which is beneficial yes. to the aircraft for one. But you also have fatigue. But then you, you need a constant um, uh, supply of, of fuel, so because you have a takeoff weight, so you can only fuel the aircraft based on uh, a certain amount. So they, they calculate it by cubic meters. Um, It just to get the aircraft in the air and then if it needs to take a long flight you can just fuel it in the air so then you need just uh, to understand something uh yeah. how much uh f-16 needs uh, to make a mission the, the maximum they could uh, take as uh, a fuel for missions so I, I, i don't remember the um, the maximum takeoff weight of of the uh, the f-16 but depending on the miss mission They just get fueled in the air, so you have air tankers. Um, <laughs> Not going to happen in depends, Ukraine, forget that one. But, uh, also depends on the how heavy are the ammunition that they are carrying, of right? And the rockets, yeah. right? There is yeah, big the, 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 the mission and so on. But yeah, my yeah, question so, um, is, is, is it, uh, oh, I think they want to a few ton. Um, aircraft are relatively light, so it's... it's uh, Yeah, it's very difficult. So, for, because I haven't worked on the system for so long, I, I have to apologize that, that I don't remember the... the I know the about the Rafale, the French uh, aircraft, with basically the same weight as the F-16. For a combat mission, you take six tons of fuel. Of kerosene, for a combat mission, it, it, in it the sail. It depends on the mission. So, so six tons. So, to answer... So, wait, wait, the wait, question I was asking is... Maybe you need the train uh, to go to the airbase every day to bring fuel. This is most likely so, but then uh, some some places actually have uh, pipelines going uh, going to the airbase. So it, oh, this, pipeline. Okay. Yeah, this is something you can usually when you build an airbase. This is something you would uh, add into the planning. But to quickly come back to to Prata's uh, question, so. Every aircraft has a maximum takeoff weight. So that, that means is that it cannot go beyond that limit. No matter how much fuel or weapons the aircraft has, it needs to be below the maximum takeoff weight just to take off. And then anything else, so for example, um, if there's more uh, bombs on an aircraft uh, and, and less fuel, it needs to take off first. And then the fuel can be added afterwards. So that's why you have air tankers. So they can just uh, fuel in air. There is a... Um, the, 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 uh, uh, my, my question is... Uh, yeah, my, thing, my question to Atreyu would be... Okay, so Ukraine is big, but the F-16, it's uh, it flies very fast. So in order for him to take off, because it has more weapons, and... He has to be refueled, so it would have to go inside of the NATO airspace to be refueled there, no, to come so, back. But in doing that, actually, this is an attack from NATO to 
So it's a very uh, complicated situation, right? Exactly. Yeah. That's, that's why I don't think it's going yeah. to happen. <laughs> I think it's going to be Ukrainian base to mission combat and back to Ukrainian base. I also had a question about a trail. trail. Another one. Sorry for so disturbing. You can do, uh, ask right away after me. So uh, a trail. When they have a mission, how much time can can the airplane take off immediately again after being refueled? Refu no. Refueled. So if if the aircraft lands, it's going to need to be prepared again. So you have. Mm, so there is a, a something we call uh, post post maintenance. It's, it's basically just line maintenance in order to prepare it again. Uh, uh, as soon as possible for flight. But and that would take how much time? It can be done within an hour, uh, depending on the findings. So if the avionics is working properly and there's no, there hasn't been any uh, signals, um, we would focus mainly on exterior. So are the, uh, are the, the plates are all, all intact, then also the rivets, if they are all fine, So it, it's a very quick checkup. This can be uh, somewhere between 45 minutes to an hour. It can be really fast. Oh, okay. So in 20 minutes, they are putting also, everyone on the ground in risk. Kind of. But also, uh, to, to uh, one thing that is important. Uh, so you know, on, um, on a military base for, for, uh, for fighter jets, What they have is, is they have like um, cages to cover the engine. So in one of the pictures, they have like uh, caps. That's when the, the aircraft is, is not operational. So it's basically on base maintenance. But once the, the aircraft lands, uh, it needs to go. So, so this picture, so that's the cap. That, that's basically to prevent anything from entering or settling uh, in the engine. Because the engine is, is a very crucial component, but it's also very fragile. But in line maintenance, when you want to have uh, uh, the engine semi-running, basically they have like a, a fence that is uh, movable. So that's electronically controlled. They will drive the, um, the, the, the aircraft into that area, have the fence up. It's because when you want to perform uh, active line maintenance, in order for preparing the, the aircraft onto uh, immediate duty, you want to prevent people from getting sucked into the engine. So they have like a, a fence. Uh, I don't know how to call it, but this is basically something that also needs... A military base is, is um, it's like a small town just for aircraft, and it needs to, to house the aircraft, but also the personnel, and then all of the electronics and, and fuel that come with it. So that's uh, just a side note. And then, so to give you an idea said, you, um, about the range of the plane, is so he has um, a ferry range, or for for 4,200 kilometers, something like that, and the combat range. So when he needs to fly high, high, low, high, do the maneuvers, it has a combat range of 546 kilometers maximum. That, Approximately, just yes. that. Yeah. Yes, because you have to understand this is that. Um, the, the maximum range is based on straight flights. So there's no maneuvering and uh, there also the higher you go, the less air resistance you have. So that's the part of the aer aerodynamic profile. So when nothing happens, it's just a straight flight. You take off, it's a straight line, you come down, you can get a certain amount of um, kilometers in contrast to uh, when the plane is actively maneuvering. Because you have to see is that um, air needs to get pushed and air is resistance and then that resistance translates into fuel consumption so fuel consumption is detrimental the moment the aircraft needs to turn it basically builds up a resistance um, so that would consume more fuel because the, the engine needs to work more harder so uh, mm. the more the aircraft is doing The, the smaller the range will get. So, it, it, so and, and then the ranges are very significant. So my question would be, if, uh, if the airplane can't really be refueled on, 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 the, on the Ukrainian airspace, so 
it has to be to to start off or take off already with the amount of uh, fuel that we'll actually be uh, able to use. How much is that? Is it still the 800 kilometers or even less? Probably less. Because for the ferry range, for the ferry range they're using external uh, tanks. One is coming in combat range, so once he needs to defend himself, he needs to drop his external tanks. Yeah, so and then are... also can also consider um, they still need to keep within the maximum takeoff weight. So they need to make choices. Do they want more weaponry or they want more flight? So this is going to be the decisions uh, at the commander's table. So if they want more flight, means less bombs. If they want could, more bombs, means less flight. Could the Russians that, create a strategy where they make the airplanes stay in the air for longer in order for them to consume all their fuel? Would that be possible as a strategy? Of course, intercepting with other planes. Yeah. And making it turning around, turning around. and yeah. Just chase it. So basically what you could do is, um, so you have, I think uh, it has has been shown already. So, so when Russia uh, um, bombed, uh, I think it was Kiev, they actually sent decoy rockets. You could equip uh, aircraft with decoy rockets just to lock on target, keep the aircraft flying. This is <coughs> very speculative. Because um, the F-16s, if they get uh, deployed, they would pro probably not get close to the enemy lines. So that means is that they would do um, a fly-in from a certain distance and then uh, shoot off their, their bombs or their rockets in this case. Probably the, the Storm Shadows, as uh, Europe use the, uses them the most. So they would at least have... Uh, approximately 80 kilometers distance from um, a probable air defense that could be locking on them. So it's basically just shooting out of um, friendly friendly territory instead of actually engaging into um, either the the, the, the the contact line and or enemy territory. Because that is just... How, uh, danger how dangerous is that? To, uh, danger flying into uh, into the contact line. No, or, flying eighty kilometers. Eighty kilometers from... is the safest is the safest yeah. bet. So basically, um, staying out. Uh, Are they gonna far... hit the target? No. So the Russians could detect it, but would probably not be able to engage uh, engage with it. So the goal is is to stay outside of of the um, um the air defense systems so they can detect you but they cannot engage with you yeah, yeah but how, how how much distance do they need in order to shoot at a target from a, so, a, 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 um, a a position of security so the the farthest they is, have they can be this is from the target uh, difficult to answer because you have different aircraft, um, air defense systems. And then the difference is uh, either 50 to, to 100 kilometers approximately. And then from the S 400s, what I've read. No, 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 uh, no, a trail. How much does the airplane, uh, what the distance of the F 16 needs in order to shoot the target? Oh, the the, the longest they <coughs> can you can have. It depends on the weapon. If you yeah, have a but... storm shadow and missile, it could be two hundred kilometers. Oh, okay. If you have big. a, a bomb with not guided uh, by laser, you have to be five kilometers. Really? Yeah, the, but... the Russians oh, think... have been able to, to build it, the guiding the... bomb the with maybe is... thirty to how forty many... kilometers range. The fi... the, my know. question is how many. So, uh, weapons sorry, uh, they have. No, so I'm uh, sorry for us to, to, to cut in. So the problem is, is that actually we don't know because the F-16 hasn't properly been tested in this kind of environment. We've seen it in Iraq and we've seen it in Yugoslavia, but 
we've never seen it being tested on um, a country or against a country with a, um, a very proper and supreme uh, air, air defense. We've already seen uh, MiG-29s, MiG-25s uh, or 24s getting shot down. Uh, and these aircraft are really capable too. MiG-29 was supposedly being the, the equivalent of, of the F-16s. So yes. we already know is, is that um, the MiG-29s, if they engage too closely, they're easy targets. They are flying ducks, but easy nonetheless. And since we don't really know the, 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 the full capabilities or combat capabilities under pressure from the F-16, it's going to be really hard to judge. It's because understand, this is that if you take 200 kilometers from, from, from the contact line to shoot, your rocket is predictable. So you don't even have to worry about the rocket hitting the target or the missile hitting the target. It's because the missile, uh, the trajectory can be uh, predicted and it can be engaged with. So you want to be closer to your actual target in order to launch your missile simply because you want to uh, prevent the predictability and the calculations because you have the weapon systems that do the calculations for you. So what is important, I think, is that for everybody to understand that for the F-16 to do combat mission, even with the 100 kilometers range weapon, they have to be in the center part of the country. Okay, I've tried on the map to uh, put the distance. If you want to, to participate in the front line uh, here, uh, with uh, 40, with uh, 400 kilometers of common mission launch, and uh, well, if you had 100 kilometers, that's 500 kilometers. I summarize, of course. That means uh, that the air base is, could be in Kiev, here, here but absolutely not in the west part of the country. It's way too far away. Yeah, but uh, I'm going so to as, you, as, as Atre I'm was saying... I'm going was... to give you another fuck up, because if... I don't even think talking about uh, air defense system, even F-16 is spotted by a Sukhoi-35. Sukhoi-35 has a R-37 um, air to air missile, and that one has a range of <clears throat> between 150 kilometers and 400 kilometers distance. So you can recalculate a lot, I think. Oh, the, the F 16 are going to have some losses, even with a uh, uh, long range uh, fire, that's of course, because the uh, Russian action. is trained for this kind of fight. I think it's obvious, but the, yeah. the main thing is, I want to show everybody is. The air base is going to be on the central part of the country, not in the west part of the country. So I, that's I want why to I wanted add, to show everybody. I want to add on this. It is probably going to be along the the, the main river, the Dnieper, because understand is is that F sixteen is is an expensive aircraft for one, but the missiles attached to it are also really expensive. So you would want to use it on um, on crucial targets. So you're not going to use any of those missiles attached to the F-16 on the contact line. These are going to That's be targeting, side. they are going to be targeting uh, behind enemy lines. So a few- Okay, the first target is here, okay. <laughs> you agree with that. Yeah. So if you want 500 yeah. kilometers for here, whoa. But then again, picking up uh, Vozdupovo's question, which was very good, how much of that, that ammunition is very expensive, right? And how much would they have available? Because the Ukraine sounds like they use the munitions like crazy and they don't care about the costs. Would yeah, there be care. enough? The British, the British care about that because they're running out. I of think everyone child. cares about it and the French, the French are the second in line. They, the one who go more to offer, but I don't know how many they have. I think this is. Ah, so we already give everything we have. We have nothing more to give. Please <laughs> don't ask us. And plus, plus France needs to save some for Niger. Yes, that's true. <laughs> sure. <laughs> no, but so here, here, here's the thing. So in, in, in these types of conditions, what you are going to be asking is to introduce 
the 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 world war or the Japanese side of the world war style of kamikaze. So you are just need, going to need to make yourself a fucking bomb. That's why I think is is that um, Ukraine is not going to house a base, especially not for thirty. Thirty is a lot of aircraft, and then the maintenance that needs to be done is is very high. So, and and I heard, they, I heard so something very interesting. Please, please, please let that finish. They got also, please. Let that finish. Okay, After okay. you are going to answer, okay? I guess, uh, so, the... Yeah, so the, 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 the thing is, is, is that um, handling the aircraft is, is far more complex than people want to believe. So if you can fly a MiG-29, uh, MiG doesn't mean you can fly an F-16. The, 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 the controls are very different. Avionics behavior is very different. Also, aircraft maneuvering is going to be uh, need to retrain. So the likelihood of using, um, uh, what's that called, mercenaries is going to be very, much higher. As to where the, the training from the Ukrainians who are trained on uh, mix is going to be uh, a big challenge. It's because you train on an aircraft uh, to make it your second nature. If MiG-29 is your second nature and now you need to retrain yourself on an F-16, it's going to be a challenge. It's because your normal is the behavior of the MiG-29 and also the... Um, the controls of the MiG-29, which are slightly different and um, significant enough to bring yourself in trouble when you need to be uh, un, uh, when you need to be able to perform under pressure. So uh, the F-16 itself, maintenance, and then the pilots, the likelihood of them coming out of Ukraine is is uh, questionable. If if um, if at all reasonable to come out of Ukraine to begin with. So, yeah, sorry, Voz. So, Voz, please, your turn. I completely forget what I want to ask, but I'll go at a new one. Okay. So, basically, it's easier to train someone new than training someone who already knows how to fly uh, MiG-29? Because um, I was, this I is like say... language. Hold on. Because this is like language. When you are over 25 and start to learn a new language, your brain is fucked up. No, no, no. It's not the same. It's not the same. It's, it's a, a, a experienced plane pilot already know how to fly. Yeah. Really. But they get you confused experience is just that you need to relearn these guys how to fly differently and how to 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 use the plane differently for the tactics it's it's, it's just different it's much easier to 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 to, to do it for somebody that already had experience but that guy need to relearn how to use the tactics somebody that's that doesn't when, have time that's when that's things good. get that's when things get complicated because uh, it's good it's good that because uh, your brain over. your brain already go something in and when you in panic you might confuse get confused and it's yeah but it's something going to it's be interesting less dangerously in panic than if you don't have any experience and these mig-29 pilots from russia of the sukhoi 27 pilots of russia of sukhoi 24 pilots of russia uh, of and, ukraine, yeah. or the sukhoi 25 pilots of U uh, ukraine already had Fly experience about the country during that war. Okay. These are veterans. Mr. Lambo, please, 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 have please, you please, ever... please, please. So uh, I just think to ask to Atreyo because he think uh, he has something else to do after that. And uh, Atreyo, just uh, yes. one last thing that you want people to understand about this uh, F-16 Airbus, airbase, if it's coming to Ukraine one day. One last thing. Um, yeah, I, I lost my train of thought because I was actually thinking about the question from Voss because he, he does raise mm -hmm. a, a point, but yeah. it's, um, uh, it's going to be complicated. So if you have, uh, if you have experience on the aircraft, it's going to be beneficial, um, when you're a first time flyer or, uh, an inexper inexperienced flyer. The difference is, is, is that 
you need to understand is, is that the aircraft is not going to be used for uh, air flight or for for air to air combat. It's just used for uh, delivering missiles, but they do that from a more safer distance. So they the the goal is to not have them fly uh, deep enough where air to air combat is realistic. So in so they will never be tested in in such condition where the the mistakes are more likely to to happen, as you were mentioning, because yes, when you are trained on a MiG twenty nine, the experience is going to be uh, significantly different from a, uh, from an inexperienced flyer. But the problem is, is that if the pressure gets um, amountable uh, or, or too big, you have a tendency to restore back to uh, what you think is normal in in a in an aircraft that you think is familiar. So so mistakes happen, and that's where you would be correct. So if you are a very experienced MiG twenty nine um, um, uh, pilot. Under extreme pressures and under panic, the mistakes are going to happen. But the goal is to prevent these the, these mistakes or or these these kinds of events from happening. And then, um, yeah, back to you, Shadowy. So what I I think for for most important thing for people to understand about the F-16s and or or aircraft in general is is that they are an addition to war. They are not the game changers. So if Ukraine cannot save its um, MiG-29s from, from getting destroyed in the air, F-16s won't, won't be the difference. So it is just going to be game plan, uh, keep them away from, from um, uh, actual engagement, and then provide them, from, uh, provide them with uh, long-range missiles so, so they can stay away from the contact line. So it's... Um, it's going to just provide air power and potentially air support, but all of it needs to be done from a safe distance because they cannot save their aircraft from uh, S-300s or S-400s in that regard. Uh, if I may just to add something, because in the following up of what uh, Atreyu was answering to Voz do Povo, there, is, uh, there was a new article today that said that uh, the forming... Um, uh, Ukrainian pilots to F-16 is taking is not ta- is not going very well because of the language barrier. Just because of the language barrier, they don't speak enough yes. English to understand to understand the, the basics. So basically, so basically okay. they only. But let's not only open 80, a, a yeah, chapter only here. Only eighty pilots pass the test, so they're only gonna train eight, eight pilots. Only, pilot. oh, only yeah. eight. Only eight. So. That don't mean a lot of things, okay? So, yeah. now we are going to change the subject they, and we are going to they're Sunset gonna, Rio. Gonna, they're gonna, means they're going to need 22 mercenaries. So, we'll see. actually, um, so, so quickly, before we end this topic, uh, yes. so here's, here's a potential, just speculating on my behalf. So, here's a, a potential idea that might uh, come to fruitation if they were to introduce or, or actually send and introduce the F-16s uh, in this battlefield is ask retirees. It's because you have many European countries, including Poland, that, that, that use the F-16s. But you also have many pilots that retired and went, to, went into civil, um, uh, civil aviation. Most of these retirees are not that old and are still very capable pilots they could be requested and or um, um, incentivized to be the, 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 the so-called mercenaries. Uh, so, how likely uh, mercenary it is, force. is questionable. Uh, uh, or of, for yes. a Legion Air Force. Kind yeah, of, yes. They are smart. It's a possibility. Going to do. It, we'll see. This is, the future it, is going I, to I would us. say, like I said, it is very speculative, but... This is something that we would need to take into account, or at least I, I think if I am at war, that that's the first thing I would look at. It's just experience. It's the best pilots. solution. Yeah, it's it's the best solution. But I think these guys know the situation, and they are not so crazy to end their life after their retirement. So 
They know who the situation is. I don't know. It's the best solution, but I don't know if they're going. Yeah, they're all, all, always nuts people, but mm, I don't see it. I, I don't think it's going to happen. It can be. It can be, but not for all the aircraft. Certainly not. Yeah. Uh, so from what I understood, like a kind of conclusion uh, of what I understood from a trail is, so we have the problem of um, of the airbase. So they have to recover an airbase to make it usable for F-16s. That takes time and that is visible. So oh, yes. the Russians will be able to see in which airbases, I don't think there will be just one, in which airbases they're actually preparing for it. So you have huge machines making the... The, um, the, 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 yeah, piste, come on, the on piste on. Air strip. Uh, yeah. The air strip, yeah, exactly. And, and that will be, uh, that will be very easy to re- remark. The second, although Shadovi didn't want to talk about it, we probably have a problem about security inside of the, oh, yes. of the, the air base for the future. When the airplanes arrive, they are very expensive. They can be, very easy targets. Uh, and it's going to be the prime target for everything the Russian have. Yeah. So that's why my suspicion, or, or um, not suspicion, uh, how to say it? I would say is, is that if F 16s get introduced into this war, the, the air base would not be in Ukraine, but either yeah. Poland, no Slovakia, or Russia. But that means we are very, and very the thing near is, the the thing is, Do you think Slovakia? Poland, Romania are willing. Yes. Uh, the will is going to strike the base, whatever it so, Wherever so it is. Slo- so, so Slovakia and, and Romania, I'm not too sure. I can filter some or I can do some investigation on Romanian behalf. Slovakia, I, I'm um, a little bit of a blind spot. But Poland, so, so to, to my experience or... or m- m- from what I have observed, I feel is that the Polish government, they live in the past and they want to retaliate based on past events. So and whatever and, they, and what, they not live in the past really, really well because but they are defending, for you they are defending, they are defending the people, they are defending the people that killed them. Yeah, yeah. They yeah, said the Soviets killed about them. This Soviet way fucking Ukrainian. Yeah, but part of Ukraine used to be from Poland. And then the Polish really, no, really. the Russians. No, really. Well, Poland, uh, actually, I Poland would like was to a small country that. before uh, the Jake. Fifth World War. You see, I would like to clarify that with uh, Atreo. There was some population living in areas about Lvov, but this is traditional, an Orthodox population area. So the, the Polish were just there because they actually uh, stole the lands from the from the Orthodox population and converted them, in some cases, to Roman Catholicism. So it's not that this is their traditional lands. They may talk about it, but it's not true. So sorry for 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 just making this explanation. Yeah, uh, but uh, what is very scary about what Shishadov is trying to show us is the distance they would need from the Polish from the Polish frontier to the targets in Russia. Uh, they, they, mean the they are going to need air refueling here. And if they use NATO air uh, fuel tanker uh, above uh, Ukraine, it's war, basically. It's war with NATO. Just take but I don't I know think... how you could avoid the war with NATO uh, in yeah. this scenario. Uh, oh. Shall we? Shall we? I think in that <laughs> case, yeah. in that case, Ukraine is safe because I don't think the F-16 is going to be in the air for more than four hours. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. so... They're going to go, still... do the job and return home. That's it. Just just forget Poland because you're going to create a, a third world war. Poland is a NATO country, so forget that option. I think uh, yeah. Mr. Lambo is right. That, that's why I s- speak so much about an yeah. airbase in Ukraine. Mm-hmm. My because question. the only choice to avoid uh, a total war with the uh, uh, before with we cl- before we close that matter. My question is: Is F sixteen a game changer? No hell, what? <laughs> no, <of course> not. <laughs> if, if they can't okay. even if if they can't even 
uh, have a, a fleet of MiG 29s make a change the game, then the F 16 is is nothing special. It's just an addition to the the Russian collection in that regard. But the, the problem sorry. about we were, talking, we were talking uh, we were talking about air defense. When this conflict started, everyone were asking, where is the Russian Air Force? Air Force. Yeah, everyone was asking that. The thing is, Russian were scared because they know they created the F-300. No, so Russia was they not scared. They were... Playing safe. Uh, yeah. Yeah, they scared. No, I think <laughs> no, 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 no. Good, they knew how good how good S three hundred is. Yeah, they I managed, would say they managed to destroy most of them, and now you can see the Russia Air Force fly like its training ground. No, I no, think, no. I think don't forget, uh, they are only yeah. flying above the guns I control. They yeah. don't go in Ukraine. Okay. They, they are fly. They are flying. I think you guys are talking about something this is, else. This is, this is why I don't think F-16 mm, is going to yes, be a game are, changer. Right. Because so, the F-400 is way better than the F-300. We, we we are, are going to talk about that later. Uh, okay, okay, okay. To, okay. <laughs> to make a kind of... To make I a think kind it's of going to be a very long recording. <laughs> to, make a, to make a kind of a political comment, I would say... Um, this is a process of escalation. So the Air Force will come, the Russian Air Force will come when the other Air Force is also there. It's a question of making things even all the time. This is what the Russians have been doing, making things even. As the West introduced some types of weapons, they introduced their weapons as well. We have been seeing this kind of logic all the time. Um, yes, and <laughs> that's... And, uh, and also about... Uh, the, the, uh, the airfield in another European country, this is too dangerous. But Vosh was, was quite important, and understanding also that having the air base in Ukraine is also too dangerous. Why will they actually on the end put F-16s? Because you have a big part of the European population that is convinced because of, of this easy... Re because you have a, par a, a, a part of the European population, political motivated to help the NAFO to help Ukraine, that really believe in these in these um, fairy tales that uh, F-16s are the game changer. We have been seeing this all the time, but there was no game changer until now. But they are introducing these things in people's heads. And even if the militaries understand and say, no, don't do that, that will be another escalation, that will be even more dangerous. They still do it because the population is forcing their politicians to do that, not realizing how expensive... The little yes. game is, like the little parts, how much money did European countries already lost in putting those little parts in, uh, in Ukraine? Sorry for this, intro, uh, for this little Not, thing. It was and it's uh, not over. very solid, because um, I, I, I want to uh, close up. I have, uh, I have to yes, 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 we have to. Uh, tomorrow. Sorry. So, so uh, quickly, um, to, to, to give a, 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 a quick summary. Of, of what I think should be done uh, and or if it makes sense to introduce the F-16s. So if they do give Ukraine uh, F-16s, it needs to come out of Poland or Romania. It needs to come out of a NATO country that actually can facilitate for uh, the F-16s. If it happens in Ukraine, not only would they make it uh, easy targets because they can be uh, destroyed we have already seen the works of the hypersonic missiles. And then also... From Romania, have... it's possible. Romania is most likely, yes. But yes. it is still playing with fire. So, all in all, I would say the F-16 is either for show, just to make the public sweet, or it is extreme stupidity to bring the world into a um, much bigger conflict that we either don't want or don't need. So I think... There is, there is still one the, scenario I didn't think about. It's uh, just about the propaganda stuff. Basically, they are going to make use uh, for the F-16 uh, uh, an airbase here. Just uh, fly, uh, make sure that the F-16 uh, take a few pictures flying uh, around here. 
on the then send them back immediately in Poland uh, to make sure yeah, they are so safe. Show fl uh, uh, flight shows. So, yes, exactly. Uh, yeah. Um, I would have loved to, to touch upon it, but um, unfortunately, my time is up. And yeah, I, I, I also actually want to engage into some more debates with uh, Mr. Lambo about the other aircrafts, because there are many. I just happens to be uh, uh, the F-16 guy because I love the aircraft. I worked on them and I love them. But it's going are... to be for time. Yes, I'm, I'm sure uh, we are going to this to to hear about the F-16. Uh, I hope you're going to be agreeing with my theories. I'm going to give you next hour for you if you're rewatching that video. Yeah. Okay. Will, uh, so see you soon, at you. In the comments. Yes. Thank you for and the also, insights. I'm and really thank you. For... Yes. For the viewers, because I haven't worked on, on aircraft for, for very long, so my, my points might be outdated off uh, or anything in that fashion. If there's any input, insights that is valuable, please put it in the comments. Uh, we will follow yeah. up on them. And I will do my best to refresh my memory and investigate as well. And then um, hopefully... Me and Mr. Lambo and um, and the, the rest of you guys also ve very much thank you. And I hope we can investigate and discuss these kinds of topics more. I also would want to introduce, instead of just the fixed wings, the helicopters, the rotaries. Oh, yes. This is something. I worked on these systems. I would want to discuss this one too. But okay. for another time. I think that... In my notes for yeah, next time, we're not gonna end here anyway. Yeah, so we're <laughs> so, gonna come back. Next topic, Everyone. so what for you could uh, go to his uh, own life? Yes, okay, bye bye, guys. Bye, bye, man. So, Mr. Lambo, it's your turn. Yeah. What do you want to speak about? What well, is your first question that you want to have me? Yes, you can continue with the NATO aircraft, maybe first. Yes. I have asked so uh, Mr. Lambo to speak to us about two NATO from aqua, from uh, two aircraft from NATO that he think is important, two from the Ukrainian uh, Air Force, and the last two from the Russian Air Force. Okay. So for NATO, what is the most important aircraft for you? I was I was actually I was actually thinking about what could replace the F-16. So instead of uh, bringing the F-16 to Ukraine, which planes are maybe better than the F-16. Um, and also, uh, going to talk about two, uh, one of them has already been replaced by the F-35. So that is a logic way of thinking. So there are two things about thinking. So you don't need to have two modern aircrafts, it's difficult. And the other one is the best aircraft that can be able to be used uh, even if, like the F-16, is going to, it's not going to work, but can give it a try. So we had two problems. So we have the biggest problem is the air base. For where you're going to launch them and where you can land them back. It's very important because I don't believe in air bases because the air base is going to be destroyed directly by the Russians when they are knowing where the planes are. Yes, so I think everybody problem. understands that. Voilà. So you need a plane that can be used on highways, like the MiG-29 as well, because the MiG-29 can close his air intakes and put and suck his air intakes from from his from his back, just above the wings in the front, to not collect dirt to end the engines. The uh, cheap, the older plane you can use for that is a tornado. Why? Because a tornado is a multi-role plane owned by Germany, Italy, Saudi Arabia, and was also in service from England. Why is a tornado very important for the moment? Because they're using the, the, the storm shadow pylons that the Sukhoi 24 have, the European Air Force, the ones that are launching the storm shadows, the pylons that the Sukhoi 24 have, coming from the tornado of the RF from, from the from the from the United Kingdom Air Force. So the storm shadows that Ukraine using are being launched by the Sukhoi 24 
and these pylons are used by the retired uh, tornadoes because the tornado was also a multiple uh, fighter bomber also and these were used to launch storm shadows and the tornado is a fantastic airplane very powerful very heavy very strong beautiful aircraft and that was for me one of the logic solutions why also because it already been replaced by the um, it is not anymore in service since 2019 from the RF, so you can refit them, reuse them pretty easily. Uh, Italians and the Germans still using them, and they are also going to be replaced by the F-35. So if these countries losing them is not such a big, is not so bad because they are not losing a plane that they're going to need for much longer years. These are future retirement planes, very important. So that was for me a logical thing. And why using the F-16s? I don't know. They built 1,500 uh, tornadoes over these completely years. A few of them crashed already, but... Yes, but they're not American airplane. <laughs> Maybe, yes. That is a NATO plane. Uh, just and... for the question, the tornado is uh, these things? I know you one? cannot see, you are the only one. Yeah, that one is here. Sorry. Is that plane? Nevertheless, the Mr. Rambo, but nevertheless, uh, Mr. Rambo, there is no news or rumors that they are forming Ukrainian pilots for tornadoes, are they? There's no news, but I can see it as a possibility, and maybe they don't tell us. Because that plane, that plane has also uh, is able to do short takeoffs and distance. So you don't really need an airstrip, a full-length airstrip. So you can also send it by street. So that is the first plane. The second plane is a Swedish one from the brand Saab. Ah, the Gripen. The Gripen, yeah. Sadly, I can't use the Vigen. The Vigen is the, the, the plane that's been replaced by the Gripen. So I go in already saying it's not going to be the Gripen because it's too modern, it's too new. They need these planes, and the only country that use them is Sweden. And they don't going to afford to lose their stock of airplanes to Ukraine because for themselves, for their own country defense, they're using these planes. But the Viking was more interesting, but it's already been not combat active anymore for too many years. But these planes are specially designed. So the Vig before the Vigan, you had the Dragon. So all the, the whole story about these Saab planes are going to tell you, starting about the Dragon. The Saab Dragon, then you had the Vigan, and after that you had the Gripen. So that's the, the most modern one. These planes are designed specially by specific rules that the Swedish ah, army super. gave to them to say, we need a plane that has to have a very big maneuverability, very easy to repair, very easy to maintain, and especially it needs to be able to take off at less of 600 meters of roads. And I say also roads. Sweden has more than 140 places in the country where they can launch these planes from the road and hide them also very easily. Because that is a solution for Ukraine. You just can't put it on a big airfield going to be targeted too easily so you need to be able to hide them these planes are specially designed that's why they also have these strange shapes like the the dragon you're showing now and um, the vegan has a, had very big canards and the gripen has movable fully movable canards and not because these are planes that are very maneuverable so they can take very big um they can they, they are very powerful they have a lot of wing lift so they are able to take off on very short roads there's a rule for SAP from the government of Sweden they need to be able to take off in a very short distance and land also in a very short distance because where you're taking off where you're hiding you need to land again on the same place and these planes are also designed to take off on the roads so that's meaning also they are, they are actually the, the engines are more protected compared to an F-16 for debris for dirt. So they are very well uh, designed planes. Very good planes actually also. Uh, very good technologic uh, aspects. Very good planes. 
So that is why I'm choosing these two types of planes. One plane because you're already going to be rid of for replacement of the F-35, and the other one because it's built for the tactic that Ukraine is needing to have to be able to survive for a long period in a time of war. So that their plane has the less chance to be taken off, uh, to be shot down um, if they are on the ground. But the air is another story. But being on the ground, you need to be able to hide yourself. Sweden, that is the mindset of Sweden since the, the Draken. And the Draken has developed, I think, in the 60s, 60s, 70s. It's been developed in that period. And from that start until now, these things have always been designed for that type of purpose. Sweden is not only thinking yes, about all troops. They are, they are one of the only countries in the NATO that's thinking also about hiding the planes next to roads, close to villages, don't care. So they can pull them by truck to another location via the road very easily. Like so these they pictures. Have, they have a whole mapping to do that. This photo is very good for that. Showing just a yeah. road and you have an aircraft. The only thing I heard about uh, a Swedish specialist talking about it was the unfeasible um, fact that Uh, pilots for these airplanes need a lot of training. They need much more yeah. training than other airplanes. They are much more sensitive. And I also, if I'm not mistaken, Mr. Lambo, I think I remember reading that they are less able to carry ammunitions as well. So they are just made for very short missions. And um, yeah, I don't know. Can yeah, you confirm because that? These planes are specifically designed for the, for the area of, of Sweden. To defend to their borders, to defend the land, so they not really take uh, talking about using them in other countries for other wars. And but the the the, the Gripen has also been a plane that, and the the, the other planes also from the Saabs have always been exported. At the moment, I think only the Gripen is active in in Sweden. And then, but Belgium was thinking about to have Gripens also, but. I mean, back to NATO. Because it's American and can carry um, nuclear American bombs. That's the only reason. Going back to the tornadoes, which actually, actually that's a very feasible um, uh, variant. Do they have. Um, what's about the fuel? Because the fuel for the F 16 is a complicated fuel, right? It's a yeah. special type of fuel. It's not just uh, normal kerosene. Can you, can you confirm that or not? But what about the fuel for the um, for the tornadoes? I think it's the same because they are running. Uh, it's like Saab also. They, they they run also with uh, Rolls Royce engines for a moment. Uh, not made their engines by themselves. Tornado is English developed also, so they're going to use the same type of 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 uh, of. of And the fuel is not such a big problem. Like for the NATO countries, the NATO countries have the NATO pipeline. So it's a big pipeline that's running to all the countries and can, so they, 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 they can take the fuel off of the ground. They don't need to transport that by trucks to the airstrip. So they already been provided on the ground. Like the, the um, it's a stupid thing, but Ryanair is flying, uh, the main base in Belgium from Ryanair for the planes is, um, is Charleroi. And the reason is why is that Charleroi has also the NATO pipeline, like other Uh, big um, airports have. And the thing was, like, we have Ostend also in Belgium, and they didn't choose Ostend. Could be a better idea for Ostend, but the fuel needed to be transported by truck to the planes, and that was higher in costs. So Ryanair chose uh, choose, uh, Charleroi because they don't need to have trucks driving to the planes to refuel them. Very super thing. But Europe has a NATO pipeline, so that I already know. Um, So they're using actually basically the same type of fuel, I think. Um, but because the less, the, less, the less problem, and even if, you, if you're using these planes hiding, not on an airstrip, you need to bring trucks with fuel. So you're going to stay the same. You still need to have trucks to drive to there with fuel because you're hiding your planes next to roads, uh, like next to a highway. Uh, yes. So, uh, excuse me, Mr. Lambo. I can confirm you that the Gripen use the GP8 as a fuel, like the F-16. Yeah, so it's the same type of fuel. So what I am thinking. 
That's not um, the same kerosene used for commercial airplanes, is it? Uh, I'm not sure. I think he speak as a highly refueled uh, kerosene. It's uh, a yeah, for me. It's not an important detail. Military, military kerosene, I think. So. So you need to transport it, and you're going to be I've, I've go, to I've go, I've got a question. All these NATO's airplanes, in my opinion, they are overpriced. Do you think worth the price? Oh yes, of course. America F-16 not is not expensive. Okay, we have I to want... understand that F-16 is not expensive. The How much is, one? is the Rafale is the F-35 is a joke. So how much is how much is one? F sixteen? Yeah. So two to forty million I think. Imagine ten how many people would be out of poverty. Yes, but that's working for everything. So yeah. that's not really the debate yeah. today, I think. <laughs> that's the thing <laughs> I always think about when I see the price of this kind of thing, you know? You yeah, should try the, to look at the Bradley you have yard in the Ukraine you know, and try to you know when I see you know countries like when I see countries like countries like Romania, they are poor. How many F sixteen they have? They don't have I think. And why oh, they don't lot, have? They have uh, I don't know, maybe twenty or thirty I think. And why it? do they need that kind of thing? To protect their because country, they don't yeah. want MiG-21 anymore. They don't even yeah, need yeah. MiG-21. Yes, and there should be peace everywhere on Earth, I know that. But it's not going to happen, so you need uh, aircraft, uh, military aircraft. Uh, Marshall Puvis is, is raising a very important question, which I think many poor countries in the world have been raising already which is the amount of money, but it's not the topic for today, but just to make a, a short closing, uh, the amount of money that your Western countries are giving to Ukraine and wasting and, and war material and equipment is so, uh, all, is so uh, bad, is so huge, that with that money they could develop many countries in Africa and solve a lot of the problems that we have nowadays with yeah. climate change forget, and so forget on. Forget These Africa, forget Africa, 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 it's the old same scheme. Let's not go into there today. But it's the same old scheme. You put the country on that and you control that country. It's nothing new. It's something very easy to explain. But uh, Mr. Lambo. To, to be a member of the NATO, you need to provide the, the requirements that the NATO asks you to be a member of the Don't NATO. Don't join NATO. Don't yeah, join it. Yes, <laughs> You don't, you don't Mr. Lambo, you're going too far away. You don't, you don't talk about financials anyway. Come because back to the problem of uh, place. That war is one big place of money uh, for everybody, so it's, it's not making even sense. Uh, okay. I have a good news on the bad news. The good <laughs> news is that we have only 10 minutes left. Oh, the and Russian the airplanes. We want to talk uh... about the Russian airplanes. Come on. Yeah, yeah Russian airplanes. Okay, okay, okay. okay. It's, 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 airplane. so, uh, it's not a problem. We can make the film longer. It's no problem. So, um, Russian airplane. Russian airplane. Which one do you want? The most beautiful one is the, the Sukhoi 35. Ah, that is yes, the, they have the, a lot the, of picture yeah. of it. They're mass-produced, either more mass-produced attack aircraft, multi-role. Um, Sukhoi, Sukhoi is definitely the, the main thing they are using, and they have a lot of variants of the Sukhoi types, started with the 27 and evolved until the 35. And then it re-evolved to the Felon, um, the Sukhoi 57. But that is actually their... The plane, if, if they want to attack air-to-air, -air, the F-16s, they're going to use that one. So that's the main uh, air combatant uh, for the Russian logically, Air Force. Logically, yes. If it's if, if they're coming, uh, uh, air air attack, air to air is going to be probably that one. 
Or you can also have the MiG-31 interceptor flying very high and targeting from very big distance because it has a very big radar system. So you can talk about Russian army has a lot of planes and a lot of different type of planes. And all these planes have different type of roles. So the MiG-31, I really think of him as a kind of snipers. You know, they far are away, the he shoot or the fear away. Yeah. They, they I've got a question. So. I've got a question for you. you. Which find... one is the best? Okay, Prata, go. No, I, I wanted to ask you, Mr. Lambo, how do you find the Russian airplanes are considered to have some interesting characteristic? They are very intuitive. Is this true? I, be, I heard about that. They are very intuitive. And the pilot is able to maneuver it almost like uh, um, uh, without thinking too much about it. Is it so? Yeah, these, are, these are very aerodynamic planes. You need to consider a Sukhoi 35, so you can speak from the 27 until the roof. But you be talking about the Sukhoi 35 because it's the most modern one of that type of plane. The size of that plane is double of the F-16. It's two times bigger than F-16. Is huge plane, and it's much more maneuverable than um, than an F-16. It has an excellent aerodynamic. I think uh, it's the same uh, kind of planes and uh, uh, F-15, not F-16. It, yeah, with with the with the Sukhoi 27, it was developed at the same period, like the F-15 and uh, the F-14. Uh, these are the, the the nice top gun planes you can call them uh, when they when you had the biggest evolution in design also these are perfect planes f16 is all, the f15 is also a perfect design plane but the russian the even when when russia didn't have money the only big manufacturer that still getting a lot of investments for the longest period was sukhoi design bureau um, because these planes are perfect to protect the country, to protect the, the borders. And we see it also now, how they're playing with the drones over the Black Sea. We saw in the beginning, uh, with the Reaper drones, we saw the, 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 the Sukhoi 27 with the less exper exper experienced pilots, because the 27 is an older plane, so they put the new pilots on these planes, and the more experienced pilots are putting on the uh, Sukhoi 35s. But they all started at 27s. And you saw them trying to, to to get rid of these drones and hitting the propeller. And then one of the last footages we saw, we saw a Sukhoi 35 doing the same thing, but he used his flares and he damaged one of the propellers with his flares. So the, you can see the, the difference between the less, ex, the less experienced pilot and the more experienced pilots. And the Sukhoi 35, is, the 27 was already very maneuverable. You have the MiG-29 and the Sukhoi-27. These are very big maneuverable planes, very cool planes to do dogfights with. If you're going to but air shows, they are also... It's important to, to be able to do dogfight because no, uh, the, a fight is going to be yeah, uh, but that out was, of 100 missile uh, combat. Yeah, but that was always been the thinking uh, way of, uh, of Russia. They've always been thinking we need to have a plane that is very good at maneuvers and it can also be used to 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 to, to try to avoid uh, attacking missiles from the other sides. So maneuverability is not only made for dogfighting, is also against other missiles. If it's uh, to can you launch so a missile? You're telling me that so fast, pro possibly if away. If your plane has a lot of agility, you have more. Uh, it's more easier to avoid a long-range missile. Of course. Okay. And these are very what powerful. Your dual engine planes, very powerful, powerful planes. Um, they are they are made to 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 fly in any conditions. The whole year, they they are not be, being put on <laughs> under bunkers on the airstrip in Russia. They are just on the ground in open air. So if snowing, it's snowing on it. It's not like F sixteen. I need to be in a hot cozy bunker. No, the, the planes, uh, most most of it just staying outside and uh, covered with some uh, protections at the parts that need to be protected. So they are they are they are planes that are designed. They can even land on grass uh, strips. They can live on. Uh, they can land on on very bad shaped strips. They they can only Do you know the also, price? Also, 
land and take off on roads very easily, not like the F-16. Okay. So even if the NATO is able to bombard the airstrips of Russia, and they have a lot of them in whole Russia, you're still able to take off on the roads. These are Do you know the, the price of like the aircraft? Swedish thinking. Like the example I give you about the SAP, the same way of thinking. They have okay. a plan A, plan B, plan C, plan Mr. B. Lambo, do you yeah. know the price of the aircraft? How much does it cost? I think it's 30, 35 or 75 million, I think, something like that. It's two, two, three times more expensive than an F-16. Okay. But still, uh, also it's about the price of the F-35. What yes, about the price? I'm not sure, so it's obviously it's more expensive. They're more modern also. They are. They have high-tech avionics. Yes, yes. They they have a very high-tech radar system, so they can target. They can keep targeting a lot of planes at one time. They carrying the R thirty seven, so the, the very modern, the most modern air to air missiles they have, and they be used for a lot of different things also. So, they also can do some okay. some uh, Fab five hundred drop bombs. So, but they have other planes for that. We need to to try to to make them closer or now. Some. No, 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 the question. No, 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 okay. Yeah, Mr. Lambo, Mr. Lambo, I got a question for you. In your opinion, which one is the best? aircraft in the world and why your opinion is no i, I always been a fanboy of the russian aircraft because it makes sense about why they are developed it and and um, you, you need to know like the 35 is, is still based on the same frame like the sukhoi 27 so they were of thinking of designing a plane and continue to developing it and not need to rebuild a completely new plane that costing a lot of money they still they, they they had a perfect airframe and they still continue to develop the the plane on that same airframe and that is very cheap for Russia. It's not like you're designing an F-22. That is maybe a better plane than even the Felon. The F-22 is they they don't produce it anymore. It's a very expensive plane. It's a very good plane, but it still has all these these advantages compared to the Russian thinking of planes. Because USA has everywhere, somewhere in the world, uh, <laughs> a base, a, a, a US base to land these planes. So they don't need to think like, oh, crap, we don't have a base, we need to land the planes. You, United States has a lot of flight carriers, so they can take these carriers also close to another country by sea. And they have all these bases in, in Europe and in, in, in Asia also. Where they can put their planes to attack certain okay. countries. So, no. So you're closer. What time? <laughs> you want to close? I'm sure. It's very, <laughs> very, well, it's a very it's short a... stream, uh, shall you? That's stupid. I'm so sorry that. about that. No, no, but you can make it longer also. Yes, I could, but I'm not going to do it. Is the uh, no, question is really a subject that uh, interests people? We we can we are make going to do another videos. recording about it. Yeah, uh, the no, reason for it. Wasting my time also. Don't know. Don't like no, it. I, 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 yeah, I, had, I had I had one more question for Mr. Lambo. No, go on. Come on, no, Mr. Mr. Lambo, finish your finish your thoughts. Go on, do it. The thing is, it, only now, like um, Russia has a lot of options to play with, and like we said before, they are very easy. Uh, they are very safe and playing with the planes. But like also the Felon the Sukhoi 57 is already flying for a few months and launching rockets from just behind the front line to the the, the Sukhoi 24s that came closer to the MiG 29s that came closer to the front line. They were at, the, at a good distance. Like we said before, the range of of R 37 is between. How much was it anymore? Between 150 kilometers and 400 kilometers. Just giving you an idea. If you're shooting just behind the front line from the Russian border to direction the plane is to try to attack uh, the front line, like I'm just saying Bakhmut, something like that, they they not even need to, to, to go inside of Ukraine to do that because, because they have these long-range missiles. So these are... Russia is testing their, their best planes that even had their best engines, but they, they still are the, the, the most high-tech planes to do that. And they have, like in bombing only, 
strategic bombing, launching cruise missiles. They can do that from a Sukhoi 24 that Ukraine still have a few of them. Like I said, they're using the pylons of the tornado from the RF to, to, to launch the storm shadows. But Russia, these are Russian planes, so they also have these planes, and they can choose from the two, from that plane, the Sukhoi 24, until the Tupolev 160, the beautiful white swan. So that was a second plane I want to talk about it. Because that is their, is the fastest, biggest bomber, supersonic bomber in the world. The white swan, the NATO name. Beautiful plane, and they are building new ones. They are project. The yeah, new one in production. These are the planes that can decide from the future. Like you have a MiG-31 that just carry one Kinzel missile. That one can take a lot of them. Really? This is a, this can shoot a, a Kinzel missile? No. But it, it is a beautiful airplane. The Kinzel airplane. has also been tested on the Sukhoi 57. They're so just we using talk, the uh, one Why? Because I, it's very fast, can fly very high. It's, it's one of their fastest uh, planes and the more logical one to, to, to launch the Kinzel. But the problem is it only can launch one. Mm. So you need one plane for one missile. That's very expensive to do. So and That one, the Tukoi 160, is a very big plane with the big capacity of load. I think it's 48 tons. Oh, it's a Navy bomber. I think we it's have a lot bomber. of... Uh, things to open a new chat again. It's amazing. Well, this airplane yeah. is just beautiful. It probably needs a, a chat just for it to, to teach people yeah, about actually, it. You can just do one, two hours of talking only about Russian planes because they have so many different types of planes yes. they still can use. That sounds yeah. amazing. Ukraine has nothing anymore. They still have maybe a few Sukhoi 25s, <laughs> but it is for the ground attack. They have maybe thing... a few Sukhoi 34 says for launching that these are bombers. A Sukhoi 24 can only launch bombs. It can't even defend himself. It's mm. been attacked by something else. It's not able to attack. It can shoot back. It's impossible. So that's only the launch platform. And that's also what I am thinking about the F-16 is the F-16 is going to replace the Sukhoi 24 just being used as a launch platform. For the storm shadows, so for the future, yeah, it's the only it's the only thing. But Russia has so many planes. They have a lot of planes, and they lost not they lost planes, but not so much because they try to play safe. In the beginning, they did the mistake yeah. to enter with these planes into the country, and they've been shut down by air defense, and they stopped really quickly by doing that. And now you're seeing other planes like the Sukhoi 25, because it's made for that, flying around together with the KE-52 helicopter. Why? Because there, there are a lot of regions where without air defense, and that opens a playground for this type of planes and helicopter to attack the ground forces of Ukraine. This is why I want to know about the NATO plane. Because they always, when they are at war, they do the no-fly zone because they always go the air superiority. But at the moment, Russia have a good air defense. And I would like to know if, I would like to know if these NATO airplanes are really, really good when they go against a good air defense. Because That's we never question that. that we everybody know. want to know. Russia, yeah. we, Russia is we, a country, is the only country in the world that always focused in air defense and in missile systems. Always. Yes. There is no country in the world that has so many different missile systems than Russia. And these are also multipurpose. So even an S-300 you can use to target ground. You, you, you are not only using them specifically to as the main purpose to destroy planes with it but you also can put a nuclear warhead on it hmm. designed for it so let's let's yeah. uh, let's, we, let's we, know, for, we know uh, f16 we know f16 is a good fight plane because so they, guys they, i i, I libya, also need to libya, work yugoslavia libya yugoslavia iraq yemen but yes. they go a Mr. Lambo, i'm going to, to tell you something Okay, I okay, propose Pata. that in 50 days, 
in 15 days, in two weeks, we speak again about aircraft, okay? Yeah, Next week is about Kenya, so... I, I have to go work. <laughs> but Sorry, in, uh, guys. 15 days, we speak again about that, okay? It was a Can't pleasure. Know. It was a pleasure. Atrey was amazing. Mr. Lambo, this guy, when he starts... Uh, yeah. When he starts like flying, a... it's amazing the amount of knowledge that he's able to transmit to us. We learned so only, much. Only it Ukrainian was... woman can stop him talking. Yes. So uh, uh, thank you for for um, for ex bringing us this this under uh, understanding scheme, especially in, in realizing the X 16s is a big mistake of um, of thinking that is there. That makes uh, that's just for uh, it's my conclusion. It's definitely just to to create the hype in terms of the society to keep supporting uh, keep supporting the um, the Ukrainian war, even if it is not feasible. Which makes us really understand there is a very big disconnection between the propaganda machine and the really military uh, strategists uh, behind. Thank you. So I think well, we're going to stop with that. I'm okay. saying everybody, see you next week and the week after okay. that for aviation again, okay? Yes. Okay. I couldn't tell you, uh, I'm <laughs> sure that you're going to be there. So, if I have time, see you I soon, have, everybody. Uh, I have a lot of uh, work to do. So, so uh, Mr. Lambo, your closing, come on. My closing is very simple. NATO can send what they want, they're going to be shut down. <laughs> okay, that's a very nice one. On that list, you are, very short. You are, you are proper Soviet that. guy. <laughs> no, it's logical. It's just logical thinking. Russia, Russia. He has told you, he is a Soviet airplane fanboy. I no, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm, I'm on boy, your side like anyway. Vos, vos o povo, your closing. With this loss, we are going to close. My, my closing is stop buy stupid shit. Help your people. You know, there is a lot of Romania here begging on the street. And when yes. your country goes like agree with 20 stop or more than... Stop buying stupid things. Yeah. Buy French so Stop buying stupid things. Way better. Things you don't need. Romania doesn't need their 16. Yes. Shadovi, Shadovi, you're closing. You're closing, Shadovi. <laughs> no, no, no. I think the F-16 are just going to be here for propaganda stuff. And they are just going to make a few <laughs> demonstrations fly in the west of the country where they are safe and they are immediately going back to Poland. That's all. And for, uh, we are never going to see UF-16 uh, striking a uh, uh, Russian air defense or something like that. Never going to happen. So now I'm closing everything. See you <laughs> okay. later, everybody. Yeah, Next week. Yeah.